Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and we are within the seven day window for series eight. We're almost there. So I recently did a starter guide in case you'd never watched Doctor Who before. That mostly included episodes from new Doctor Who, but the BBC was really nice and suggested that I do one for Classic Who. So that's what this video is gonna be. It's just a starter guide. So if you are really passionate about Classic Who, feel free to leave your own recommendations in the comments. And I'll also be including streaming links for everything on Tumblr. So there'll be a link for that in the description. If you're just finding me for the first time though, I do weekly Doctor Who videos. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff for each of the episodes of this series. I'm even doing a weekly giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. So super quick classic Who explainer. As a series, Doctor Who's been around for over 50 years. It started back in the 1960s and ran till it was canceled in the mid to late 90s. Eventually, Russell T Davies swooped in and helped the BBC reboot it in 2005. So everything before the reboot is referred to as classic Doctor Who. So whenever you're searching for it on the web for episodes, you have to search classic Doctor Who. Otherwise, it'll return search results for the new series. They also had this weird numbering thing where classic Who episodes are listed by season and the new reboot are listed by series. So season and series are two different things. Right now on Hulu, there's about 413 episodes of classic Doctor Who. I think it's Hulu Plus, actually. That is a shitload of TV. That is barely half of it, though. A lot of the older episodes are missing. As of right now, in total, there are 800 episodes, including all the new reboot stuff. One of the big questions, obviously, is do I have to watch everything? Short answer, no, but watching Classic Who will give you more context for the way Peter Capaldi's episodes will play out visually and thematically. Because I get the sense that Peter Capaldi's Doctor, in terms of tone, just leans closest to the third and fourth Doctor, I'm going to start with those episodes. In general, though, it's fun to just go back and watch the first appearance of a lot of big characters, monsters, villains. So there's a lot of things that I don't include in my list that are also important, but I'll try and include in my Tumblr link roundup. So let's start with the third Doctor. He was Peter Capaldi's introduction to the series. He even got to go on set and meet him one time. I'm going to try and limit this to just a couple episodes per Doctor, but first off, there's Spearhead from Space. It's the first story to feature the third Doctor in his own episode. A lot of times when a Doctor regenerated, you see the new Doctor, but technically that was during a finale. Spearhead from Space was just the first episode of a new series. When you search for it on Hulu, it's Season 7, Episodes 1 through 4. Those are four separate 25 minute episodes, so it was a big story. The way Classic Who stories are organized were a little bit different from the way they do it right now. They'd have like a story that would cross over four episodes, like four 25 minute episodes. Spearhead from Space is famous for several reasons. Of course, it's the first appearance of the third Doctor, John Pertwee. It was the first Doctor Who episode to be broadcast in color, and it's considered the beginning of the Unit years. Just a period of time where Unit as a group was a big part of the stories. Unit, for those that don't remember, stands for Unified Intelligence Task Force. Remember, they were a big part of the 50th anniversary. During Classic Who, the big Unit character was Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. On the reboot, his daughter Kate is head of Unit. So that's the person that you saw in the 50th anniversary if you watch that episode. Spearhead from Space is also really interesting because it's the beginning of this arc where the Doctor has been exiled to Earth by the Time Lords. I guess that's what you get when you meddle with time and space too much. The main villains were the Autons, these creepy mannequin looking replicants. The episode's a good example of a really scary, creepy story that also has a lot of humor, which is what people are saying Capaldi's run is going to be like. Like classic horror with comedy. There's also a lot of Time Lord biology explained in the episode, so if you ever wanted a course on Time Lord biology, this would be the episode for that. Then we move on to the first appearance of the Master in Terror of the Autons, the Roger Delgado Master. That was Season 8, Episodes 1 through 4. This is the beginning of the Third Doctor's second series. I know they used the Autons in the previous series opener, but the storyline introduced us to Doctor Who's greatest villain, and from a production standpoint, it was a bit of a reboot of the Third Doctor's run. They just brought in new companions, new uniforms for the unit characters, and new standing sets. Most of the time nowadays, whenever people talk about big changes during a Doctor's run, it's new Doctor outfits, new TARDIS consoles, and new companions. If you watch the 2012 Christmas special with Matt Smith, they did all three of those. New TARDIS design, new Doctor costume, and new companion. That Clara was kind of a companion. Technically, Clara Oswald the companion in Series 8 is different from Clara Oswald Oswald the almost companion. Side note, I'm actually going to address the rumors about Jenna Coleman leaving during the Christmas special this year after my Classic Who recommendations. So moving along now to the Damons, another great Master episode. It's Season 8, Episodes 21 through 25. It's the last story of Season 8, basically. It invokes a devil-like character. Doctor Who has always done a lot of cool versions of devil-like characters. And I'm a big fan of supernatural stories. This episode so just does a really good job of addressing the issue of the devil as a concept that is just differentiating really powerful supernatural beings from religious labels like devil and god. 
For any Marvel fans, this is actually the kind of story you might find in a Doctor Strange comic. I always feel like Doctor Who tackling mythology is a lot of fun, so I'm looking forward to it in Series 8. Hopefully they do a lot of stories like that. Moving along, my final third Doctor recommendation is The Time Warrior. That's Season 11, Episodes 1 through 4. This was the introduction of Sarah Jane Smith, probably the most famous of all Doctor Who companions. She got her own spinoff, so let's just agree she's probably the most famous. She's like the Tom Baker of companions, which is funny because she was also Tom Baker's companion. Interesting bit of trivia, this is the first episode to refer to the Time Lord's home planet as Gallifrey. I have no idea why they waited till the third Doctor's run to officially name the planet as Gallifrey, but that's just how it happened. The episode itself is set in medieval times, and since Capaldi has the Robin Hood Robots of Sherwood episode, it only seems appropriate to watch Time Warrior. I'll be really interested to see if there's any direct references to Time Warrior in Robots of Sherwood, but be sure to watch both episodes and try and find any. The other big things that happened during the episode were the Time Lords lift the Doctor's exile from Gallifrey and we meet the Santarans for the first time. Remember, Strax is a Santaran, so this is what his race looked like during Classic Who. So now let's jump forward to the fourth Doctor's episodes, Tom Baker. Peter Capaldi actually famously sent in fan art and fan scripts to the Doctor Who offices during these years. I think he was about 15 years old when he did it. Somebody asked him on the press tour last week about it, and he said he was a little bit embarrassed by the stuff that his 15-year-old self wrote, so I think that just means he won't be doing any public readings of those childhood fanfiction scripts, but we can always hope, because I think that'd be pretty awesome. Raise your hands if you would like to see Peter Capaldi fan scripts on a DVD release. The Fourth Doctor's run gets referenced a lot just because internationally it was the most popular in terms of audience size. It was a period of time when Doctor Who's popularity exploded more than ever. Tom Baker was also real lucky and got to keep Sarah Jane as a companion for three seasons. A lot of times, new companions don't last very long after a new Doctor comes on. You can consider Planet of the Spiders or Robot his first story, Tom Baker's first story. Planet of the Spiders was technically the third Doctor's finale, so Robot season 12 episodes 1 through 4 was the fourth Doctor's first official story. So that might be a good place to start, unless you want a really creepy spider story, then watch the season 11 finale. There are so many important Tom Baker episodes, but I feel like Genesis of the Daleks is also a really good place to start. It's season 12, episodes 11 through 16. It's a six part story. We learn all about where the Daleks come from and Davros, who is like the Dr. Frankenstein to the Dalek monster. The Khaled mutants are still some of the most horrific creatures that Doctor Who has ever done. Genesis in general is just a really good story about the dangers of mutually assured destruction. Surprise, surprise, it was produced during the mid-70s when the Cold War was still escalating between the Soviet Union and NATO countries. You would be hard-pressed to find a science fiction series during that era that did not deal with nuclear war in some way. So moving along, there's Pyramids of Mars, very cool Egyptian mythology episode. Season 13, episodes 9 through 12. It introduced Sutek, you know, very powerful villain. I included in this pick mostly because Peter Capaldi has an episode titled Mummy on the Orient Express. I'm not expecting a ton of references in the new story. It's the one that Fox is starring in. She'll actually be performing a song in the episode, which kind of reminds me of Kylie Minogue starring in Voyage of the Damned, the 2007 Christmas special. That's actually an interesting fun fact. There have actually been a lot of real life celebrities that have starred in Doctor Who over the years, like big celebrities. So moving along, there's Brain of Morbius. It's season 13, episodes 18 through 21. For some reason, it's not on Hulu, but it is on Daily Motion. So I'll have a master Tumblr post with links to all the episodes. So you can watch them on your computer if you want. You don't have to go hunting for them. Brain of Morbius is just really cool because the Doctor has this mental battle like Matt Smith had in Nightmare and Silver. If you remember, during that sequence, all the faces of the previous Doctors flashed on the screen. During the scene in Brain of Morbius, a picture of a young version of the first Doctor flashes up, so you get to see what the first Doctor looked like as a young man. It's just a nice piece of history. So next, moving along to Deadly Assassin, a really awesome Gallifrey story. That's season 14, episodes 9 through 12. I think it's the only time he visited Gallifrey without a companion, but it's really important because it established the Time Lord's rule of regeneration, the rule of 12. I know everyone was a little bit confused with what went down during the Christmas special and Matt Smith getting his regeneration cycle rebooted. Deadly Assassin is where that canon was established. It also features the first appearance of the Peter Pratt Master, who tries to hijack a new cycle of regenerations. Because Roger Delgado, the previous version of the Master, died in a real-life car accident, they had to replace the actor, so as a way to explain the change, they just used the same way that they explained different Doctors. They basically just started presenting the Master as a Time Lord who regenerated himself, so his appearance would continue to change through the years. And there's also a lot of cool Doctor Who concepts that show up, like the Eye of Harmony and the Seal of Rassilon. So next, moving on to Legopolis. That's basically the fourth Doctor's final episode. It's season 18, episodes 25 through 28. I'm pretty sure it's not on Hulu, so I'll also include some alternate streaming links on that Tumblr post that I'm making. 
So this episode isn't quite as much fun as a lot of the other Tom Baker episodes, but I still feel like it's very important. It was the first story to feature the Anthony Ainley version of the Master, and it was the fourth Doctor's regeneration into the fifth Doctor, Peter Davison. In real life, David Tennant, the tenth Doctor, married Peter Davison's real-life daughter, Georgia Moffat, making the fifth Doctor the father-in-law of the tenth Doctor. Just some nice Doctor Who trivia. And of course, Georgia herself went on to play Jenny, the Doctor's future daughter, in the canon of the series. Very meta, very cool. I just love the way Doctor Who bends in on itself. There's a billion other really important episodes, but since I don't want this to turn into an hour-long video, I'm just going to include the essentials from the other Doctors in my Tumblr post with the streaming links. But if you are a huge fan of classic Doctor Who, feel free to leave your recommendations in the comments below. There's a ton of other episodes that I didn't list. I'm not going to do a Q&A for this just because today is a Game of Thrones day too, but I will be doing more bonus videos over the course of this week since we are within that 7 day window. So in case you haven't seen it yet, Doctor Who Series 8 Episode 1 airs at 7.50pm UK time on BBC One. Obviously it's different for international countries for those of us that don't live in the UK, so if you're not sure when it airs, just check your local listings. The episode is 80 minutes, so be sure to adjust your DVR accordingly if you need to. And if you don't have a TV subscription, or if you stream everything, the episode will be in the BBC iPlayer right after it airs. If you're not in the UK, you might have to use a workaround to use the iPlayer, but I'll try to add instructions for that in my Tumblr post. Now just to address the rumor of Jenna Coleman leaving. So what happened is, is the Mirror was reporting that Clara is going to end her run as a companion in this year's Christmas special. It's not confirmed, and the BBC is refusing to comment, so I'll just say that it's a rumor. I can't confirm it. Capaldi is supposed to be staying on for Series 9, supposedly he's already signed, along with Stephen Moffat. It's Coleman that has not made any official statements as to whether she's staying or going, so we'll just have to wait and see about that. My next Doctor Who video is going to be my favorite catchphrases. Everyone's wondering what Capaldi's is going to be? So far, the funniest theory I've seen has been kidneys. And just to explain the weekly giveaway, in case you haven't seen any of my other giveaway videos. So what it is, is I just do a weekly Doctor Who giveaway. All you have to do to participate, or to enter that is, is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. So it includes review videos and bonus videos. So for instance, right now a giveaway is starting. So just leave a comment if you're a subscriber, and I'll announce a winner the next time I post a bonus video. Congratulations to this week's winner, Persian Monkey Studios. Always be sure to time travel with a banana. It's an Amazon gift card. I'll message you on your channel for details. For those that are asking, I am working on a Game of Thrones video for tonight. I still do my weekly Game of Thrones videos. While you're waiting for that, you can click here to get my last Doctor Who trailer video. I list all 12 episodes in Series 8, not the Christmas special, that's going to be the 13th. And click here for my starter guide for the reboot episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, six days, so let's all just give each other a high five right here.